Okay, Gabby, should we go? Okay, let's go. Let's go. So, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we are so very grateful that you're here and can join us today from all over the world. Um, I would ask you to have put mute on your um, connection, please, if you have it. Um, we, for the next hour or so, we're going to be exploring some insights on how to get unstuck in selling. And uh, these are uncertain times, certainly. So I am Gabriela Pulido, founding partner of Scalto, a creative consultancy. I am here with my friend Ale, Ale Alejandra Zlatapolsky. We're both entrepreneurs, moms, creatives, and natives in distributed uh, team working environments. But more, most importantly, we're both here with the same passion, being creative problem solvers and want to make a difference. Isn't it, Ale? Yes. Hi, everybody. I'm Alejandra Zlatapolsky. I'm the founder of Slata, a consulting firm for marketing communications for financial services. And yeah, the idea here is to try to make a difference, to give you ideas on how to work, how to get unstuck uh, from this crisis, thinking about how to sell you a product or service. Um, also, we will work on a lot of questions if you have them. We want to make this as interactive as possible. And uh, so just drop them on the chat um, throughout the presentation and we'll get to them. So Gabby and I met like some years ago and we worked on several clients together and it has been our satisfaction to help companies and people that want change. Um, so that is what brought us together. That is what keeps us together. And now companies are not like, um, they don't have the option to change, they have to. So that's what we are here for, to help um, companies and people um, make the transition. So, Gabby? So, like, uh, like I've said at the beginning, uh, there are unprecedented times, requires a new normal, assess our behaviors, we've seen KeyCom is a new normal. What is normal? I mean, there's uh, absolutely nobody to know, but what we do know that there are important behavior shifts that are affecting all of us. We would like to never go back to what was going on. This is Ariana Huffington and, and her quote. We will rise and make, uh, uh, make for a better occasion and make a, a better selves. So for, for instance, me, week eight of uh, quarantine here, uh, my objective is to come out of this better and, um, and we most likely never going to come back to the old self again. So this is how we're getting. And many, many of you, you can next slide. And many of you, like us, trying to figure things out as we go. So uh, we'll, we'll, we're trying to maneuver while things are moving. So you can't maneuver when something's still. So we're trying to move and maneuver this and trying to figure out the way we should head our selling process, which is what brings us today, and figure out the opportunities we lies ahead. So what we see in different trends, I'm sure you've been um, viewing that, of course, there's no digital interaction, there's no virtual person-to-person uh, -person interaction. Uh, person to virtual changes in humans and interactions are clear, and that's the first one. We uh, two or three kisses, greetings, or handshakes is going to be reconsidered every time we're going to meet. So that will change. That On the surface, that would change. But deeper, we're going to see key changes in communications, key uh, changes in um, selling strategies. We're seeing permissions, like, for instance, digital environments uh, making contracts, or even in Spain, uh, uh, there's audits and there's uh, even uh, virtual notaries uh, accepting uh, legal documents. That's it. amazing. So things that are, were out there before, uh, now we're taking it for granted and we're using every day. So deals are happening. We will see change in communications and more ways to connect beyond what we saw today. The next thing that we're seeing is planning. So who would have planned? What if a pandemic comes? There, there are many, uh, like Monday morning quarterbacking. Yes. But the idea is to plan for tomorrow and act today. Um, we've seen that planning starts in what ifs, the big, bold, unthinkable uh, happenings or things that could happen, can happen and will happen. 
So we should put that into perspective um, and we're happy to see some of our clients figuring this one out, trying to, okay, embrace the changes and going forward. Right, and also um, there is a common thread that you can apply to everything that is happening. And is that we are not moving in a new direction. We are moving in the same direction that we were moving before, just a hundred times faster. And those are the trends that we are also seeing. The specialization, the, the, the focus on niche products and niche audiences has been a trend for years. Just now that you have to reach your target niche mostly online makes it even more important. I have been talking about this with my clients for years. I always ask them first, who are you talking to? How can we specialize your product more? How can we make your niche smaller so that you give the right product to the right person? For example, I specialize in financial advisors. The best financial advisors I've found, I, I remember talking to one that told me, I, you know, I just work with professionals that have, you know, that, that's basically the answer always. You know, I, I work with professionals that have a certain network. But then I, I met one that said, I work with nurses. And that guy was doing amazing. He was just focusing on nurses. And what happened? Nurses would refer him. And he knew nurses and their financial situation inside out. So his offering was, um, was easier to refer. Another trend that was already happening and started with millennials some time ago is I'm going to buy from a company that I see that has a good impact in the world too. Like a good example from the early days is Tom's, the, the shoes company that, you know, donated shoes. Now, all of the other corporations, small and large, have been having this conversation. You know, what is my purpose be, be behind profits? So now every single organization will be under the spotlight on what, how did you behave during the crisis? What did you do? And how is your offering going to help the world moving forward? So the purpose-driven economy is also being accelerated. And Nike for that is a great example. We've seen Nike react to this crisis in an amazing way. Not only did they do a campaign that goes in line with their core values, that is community building, playing, like they, they did this campaign that's called Play Inside, that is, you know, exposing their, um, their clients to the world. And also they partner with other um, good organizations. They may have pledged, I think, of $17 million to organizations helping the COVID, um, places impacted by the COVID. And they also move fast to create those shields that you see to not donate them, not to sell them. They're only donated them. And they did all this without deviating from the core values. So authentic messaging is key, always. You know, work on what you believe in and for what you believe in. Other examples Gabby can give. Yeah, other examples were uh, Nike is one. Many, many companies are doing masks, are doing hand sanitizers out of uh, uh, beer uh, distillers. But Jimmy Fallon is incredible. I don't know if you guys uh, watch him at night. He's, it, he's a great example of how to reinvent, how to keep connecting with the audience. Um, he's working from home, working at home, working with his assistants, his two daughters, and, and uh, being her, their, his assistant in the process. And he keeps connecting. He keeps figuring out ways to, to um, embrace the circumstances and make the best out of it and keeping true to his, it's per, his purpose. He wants to make people laugh. So that was um, something like really, really interesting. Uh, learning on the run and adapting amazingly. Another example is Microsoft. Microsoft, as other tech companies, they, but one interesting example for uh, like Microsoft is that they were more like a teaching uh, company. They became a learning company when they transformed. And they most, if you have kids at home learning from home and doing this whole homeschooling, 
uh, which we all have and or some of us has and have in, in the process, Microsoft really reinvented it. They were the first one to embrace the 100% uh, distributed teams. They kept employee payments. They did support the schools that they're happening. So it's it's amazing the real time response, and also keeping true to what they're they stand for. Then we see. Uh, in, in this day and age, people are, there's, there's no such thing as getting stuck. We need to get unstuck. And if we find this, this way, as we've seen uh, Jimmy Fallon and others trying to figure out the way to, to embrace and thrive, we see people in this two by two matrix saying degree of change and at a personal level versus the degree of change at, at the outside level of the environment is, is how do you embrace it and you thrive? It's just like you take into control, you take it, your change is part of you and embracing what's happening. And that would be the example of, of Jimmy Fallon. Adele, you've seen how she lost zillions of, uh, of pounds in a way. She did amazing change at a personal level. And we see like we work, amazing degree of change at the outer level internally, it has a lot to be said for. I mean, we in Colombia, at least in one of our, our offices, we are at WeWork. We have not received the, the the amount of treatment or the or the the care that we expected from a company such as WeWork. And talking about from ourselves and talking about what's happening, then you see the stock prices or what's happening. And then, and I'm not going to even consider the lower. Uh, left hand of, of a matrix, which is wait and see. That's the worst place you can be at. So you need to act. And just the expectator role at this point, it's not, not even. Thanks. Ali, any comments on this one? Okay, so how do you get unstuck? Oh, yeah. Um, so getting unstuck. So. For the last month and a half, um, what I've been repeating constantly is one of the greatest impact of this crisis is emotional health. So whether it is with you or with your team, um, I think that working on getting stuck, yeah, unstuck starts from there. So that's why in this cycle that we designed, we said, okay, what should you do first? Well, it's actually a cycle. We so said, you froze, I guess. I froze? Am yeah, I back? Yeah, yeah, you're back, okay. So we're going through this cycle and we say, let's check your emotional pulse, why? Because we are, we're all going through this together. Everybody has had their ups and downs. Many of the video calls I've had with clients and not non-clients, uh, executives and CEOs are about, okay, how do I get unstuck from this overwhelming work or paralysis or just plain emotional distress? Um, how do I manage my new calendar? What is going on and how do I manage the team that's going exactly through the same emotions that, that I am? Um, so embrace it, understand that it's the reality that everybody's going through. And once you know where you are that day, that week, work on changing your mindset. See what you can do to get to a place of movement, to get to a place of, okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to adapt. I am accepting this situation. I'm assessing it as objectively as I can, and I'm going to add up to it and act on it. And then make sure you're disciplined about your actions. Establish whatever you need to um, execute on your plans. And that can be your calendar of work, that can be your project management, which we'll touch on later. And do this with your team too. And you're gonna get stuck again and you're gonna um, reassess where we're going because of the speed of change. And that's gonna happen again. So you have to go through that cycle constantly. So what if, yeah, the, the we've seen its clients um, at the very beginning of pandemics, like what I'm gonna do, we have a client and the, the luxury bags industry 
super stuck and, and oh my God, I can't get my, my supply. I can't get the leather from Italy, Spain. I can't do this, can do that. So at, at the very beginning, she was super worried and stuck. It's like, okay, why don't you change your mindset? If you say you can't and you can't do this, you can't do that, change the wording Go for won't. I won't uh, communicate. I won't reach out to my loyalty group and, and say wh what I'm going through. I won't do this and take it. Uh, and she took, embraced the circumstances and she's acting upon uh, different options. Not only, yes, maybe she's not selling immediately, but she's building up uh, equity and goodwill for later on. And that's what we've seen. Change your language is very important in, in a way what we're doing and the can't to won't and, and the idea of buts always second guessing. Let's go forward. So we've seen this cycle working and we wanted to share with you that if you find yourself stuck, that could be a, a way to jumpstart it. So if we go on, how do we actually Gary, could you put on mute? Yeah. It's interesting. She doesn't have them in Gary. Ah, yeah, well, I've it. Put yourself, put yourself on mute. Thanks. So, what is the impact of all these on your sales process? First of all, so we need to reassess your sales process. This cycle that we you see here, we call it the loyalty cycle, the loyalty loop. Um, no matter what industry you're in. Um, new needs are coming up fast, um, many that you are not foreseeing or many that you will. But if you go through this loyalty cycle, in every single step you see there are things to adjust in this new world. For example, um, going from need to research to selection. Um, that's something, again, that had been happening before. We went online with this process already. We had the you know, the advance of all of these online reviews. Now that has evolved into distrust of reviews. So we're still looking for some feedback from friends and people we know that have, you know, used that products. But the idea here is to invite you to take a look at this process and think where does your sales and servicing process rely on live or human interaction to close a sale or to deliver the product? Or is it, you know, during research, for example, when you're searching for a home, it used to be that you went from home to home. Now we're seeing that they're, they're coming up with a lot of virtual uh, open houses. Okay, how is, that gonna, how is that gonna affect the sales process? Is it gonna make it longer or shorter? So, or for example, financial services companies that I work with. Most of the lead generation, the way to find clients was to go on roadshows or to go to conferences. That's definitely gonna be cut down for the foreseeable future. How are you gonna start building the trust that you need to build with your prospects without the live connection? Um, so I'm sure that if you take a look at this, you'll be able to actually just come up with ideas on how you're going to replace one thing with the other. Yeah, and the idea is that pain points in the back and the previous slide, Ali, previous slide. So the idea is that to figure out where your pain points are, where is it broken, where where is it changing? Uh, like for instance, you just did a fifteen thousand. Not the conference, virtual conference, amazing. It was supposed to be. If it's supposed to be live, it's supposed to be in person, and it transformed and it sold completely. And in, in, in a way that things are changing, and the idea is to like the the top uh, corner of the of the matrix that I told before. We need to adapt and we need to thrive and figure out where is it broken in this loop. Exactly. So. Once you know that the, where the process is flowing, you need to define your objective and your selling process. Either you're generating revenue, you're generating assets, or you're selling your products, or you, you're solving for something, a service, or you're building up goodwill in a way for future sales or for future understanding or valuations of your company. The idea is to, to 
try to figure out the purpose of, of your communications or the objective of what is, try not to blend them because at the very end, your customer, your client is really, really going to know what, what's behind it. So the idea more, more on the sense of uh, what it is, for instance, in the luxury bag um, example that I was telling you, the client tried to deliver it, but they, she's building goodwill because she's telling everybody, this is what I'm going through. And at the very end, maybe somebody wants to buy, purchase a, a bag just because it's supporting some effort that she's uh, supporting. And that's giving goodwill. But the, at this point, she's doing one side of the, of the uh, equation. And uh, try to not do both at the same time. It's all right. There's, one side is not better than the other. Just figure out what, what you're trying to, the objective of the, of the sale is going to be like, or the communication is going to be for. Exactly. Your client will always, uh, you know, see through that. Oh. Absolutely. So now going into some of the things you can do. Um, we, we group them in, in three actions that we think you should be taking for this time. Um, first of all, your team is your most important asset. So never forget about that. So how you are selling and your team will be the face of your company, no matter what you're doing. So how are you aligned? Do they know their short-term objectives? Remember, remote work is just not about sending emails or about Zooming. Uh, for example, I've been working with a client for a couple, for a couple of years on the transition to a project-based workflow. And actually, the CEO used to be reluctant to remote work. And now that we have implemented a project management system that focuses on the workflow no matter where you are and it's not focused on roles it was put to put to the test because everybody just went home and of course there is always going to be things to adjust but the idea is that you need to make sure that everybody is doing their part and they know where they stand um, engaging remotely is always of course a greater um, challenge so there are some, you know, I've been speaking to some CEOs. They tell me, you know, I'm worried that the team is actually burning out because the, the, um, the, the move from the office to the home made them feel like they had to work more hours or harder. So make sure that culturally you're giving the right example and you're focusing on what projects need to be accomplished. And here are some tools, some ideas. I'm actually uh, Asana obsessed. Uh, my life is on Asana, um, both work and uh, personal actually. But there are many tools like that that help you organize teams, um, that help you establish what needs to happen, when and how, and who's responsible. And just make sure that the team also knows the why. Like, make sure you connect with the team. Um, I had one CEO that was traveling so much uh, before this that did not have that much time to really, you know, connect with the whole organization. And we started these, you know, these calls in which it's an informal way to, um, for him to connect with the team. And the other day we had this great question from one of the, you know, interns actually asking, hey, how, how did this all start? Why did you do it? Why, you know, where are we heading? And, you know, why? And it was amazing because, you know, now, you know, you see sort of the quote unquote flattening of the organization, but it also helps, you know, with culture trans transmission too. So make sure that you connect. The communications, Slack is a great tool. We've used it with Gavi too. Um, to integrate communications channels. Also, you don't want to be bombarded. I had one client send me, you know, 10 minute WhatsApp uh, audios and then the email and then the Dropbox file and then the Asana task. So you want to make sure that, you know, we are, you, you don't bombard, digitally bombard the team 
and provide one single place where everybody can meet. And also don't forget about the water cooler conversations. I know that, you know, when you connect online, it's harder to do that, but the human conversation, the emotional connection is key. Um, you want to put, you know, incorporate some touch points in your workflow in which you connect with your team. So in this, in this uh, environment where this taking care of your team is super important, we have, I have like two examples that really impressed me. One was the, one was the, well, there's this um, session that we did with top CEOs and what was, it, what, was, what was their major concern? The major concern was how do I get to what's happening with my team? How can I connect? Before it was just, I did the roundabouts. I did, I connected in, uh, in person and they were in meetings and were there. And now I don't really know. And they're overworked. Like I was saying, they're burnt out and they're working from home, at home, with home, everything happening and there's nonstop. And the other thing is another client in, in, um, in Colombia, we're working with them and it's like, they're trying to figure out a way. This is a fast moving consumer goods company. And they're trying to figure out what their team is doing, how to connect one message, clear message with them so that they can act and they can be safe. The very beginning, so safety is first consideration. And then how we can we least disrupt our operations, given the fact that most of our countries are in lockdown or somewhat um, personal lockdown, if you will. So we're, as we head towards the opening of different waves that we're doing here in Florida, we're starting off next week on the 20th. We're probably starting off on, that's what they say today. Um, we need to find these tools to connect and maybe uh, they, they, had, they were already there. Zoom was already there before COVID existed, but now it's a Zoom craziness that's happening. And other um, tools are also, but uh, Gale was saying, keep, keep it honest, keep it frequent, and keep it directed to something that would truly uh, true to the brand. The other, um, once, this is a segue to my, the communications now. We need to start communicating now. Reassess your situation, where you're at. What are the... The first thing that you need to communicate is with your client, your current client base. That's the obvious. Don't tell them where you are. Be honest. Don't tell them what's happening. Maybe you're vulnerable at this point. It's okay. There are permissions to go forward. The I see tons of most many participants in the service industry and and, and consulting industry also. Uh, tell them where you're at. Some of them were were uh, here also suffered from COVID. So I'm aware that you're here, thank you so much. But focus on, on, tell them where you're at, what's happening, then focus on your team. They're the face of your company in communication and monitor and obtain result, uh, feedback for what you've done. Uh, these companies that we face and uh, there are so, so many different ways to create uh, engagement. So one would ask for, I, I heard this example, is there's a Zoom meeting happening and all of a sudden just a llama pops into the, one of the uh, meter in the meeting room, just an animal coming in there just to creatively spark the conversation and only to update and, and give, just give different meanings to why we're connecting and why we're there. So the next slide would be we think about your audience, who you communicate into, uh, what's interesting with, don't overestimate where they're at because maybe they're at COVID or maybe they're financial distress or maybe there's something else. Just be super, show empathy and be confident, compassionate about what there is that's happening and, and maybe you just don't know, just ask. Uh, what do you, what do they want to know about? Uh, is the posting that you're doing, is, is this relevant? Uh, we wanted to do this. Why did we want to embrace it, it going and, and, and do this conversation? Just because there are a lot of people out there stuck and there are things that we can do. And we, I mean, talk about me. We, like, Ali helped me out. We, we've been, we launched Scalto in uh, March 31st. I was like, you're crazy to launch this company at this point. I was like, why? No, why not? 
and I, it's just, I can't, no, I, I won't do it if I don't want to do it. So it's a, it's an amazing experience. I have an amazing team uh, working towards and their uh, circumstances and, and, and really challenging circumstances in Venezuela and Colombia, Mexico and Florida and everywhere. So it's a global thing. So think about where you are, connect, establish the communications objectives. Like I said before, if you're going for the cash, which is fine, if you're going to revenue generation um, communications or you're going to the equity or the goodwill generation um, communications and let them know that you're here, that uh, when they need you, when, when they're uh, ready for, or if they want to, I mean, have a sounding board, act upon uh, those objectives. Yeah, also, I always think, you know, at the beginning of the crisis, all my clients were coming to me like, okay, what, what should we say? Let's go, let's talk about it. And, you know, every single company I've ever bought anything from sent me an email. I don't know, I'm sure it happened to everybody. And, you know, sometimes the first question you need to ask is, do I have something to say? And is that person gonna value that message? So, just don't over communicate. And I think that we are a point, at a point now in the crisis that we can stop talking about COVID. Uh, in a way, in our communications, we can start setting. It is time to sort of um, understand that we're in this challenge, but we're already here. We're not going anywhere. Let's, you know, start moving towards the new direction, right? Right, but in the, there will be a, sorry. And the, the idea is, is also uh, define what's the best, like Ali was saying, it's a WhatsApp, Slack, Messenger, um, Instagram, instant messages, and then we go for Dropbox, we know for the, to establish a channel that really connects. And like in Latin America, it would be uh, easier to go with WhatsApp groups. In North America, it's more on the Messenger and, and, and trying to figure out that channel. Uh, in Colombia would be Facebook and Venezuela would be Instagram and Florida would be, I mean, there's different channels that you can activate. YouTube is huge. I mean, how many of you in this, um, in this experience experiment that we're going through have learned to cook, learn to, I mean, learn to different, uh, yeah, different things that uh, are happening. Um, use your channels wisely and, and really connect. I mean, I've seen, so many creatives, uh, so many amazing things happening, and maybe I'm an optimistic. So I, I really look forward to figuring out opportunities, and and uh, the idea for you is communicate them and embrace them. Right. So the third idea we're throwing at you that you should be doing right now is think beyond digital. Yes, every single gym instructor just went and started their classes on Zoom. But what is your product going to look like in a digital and human mindset? Um, again, I know I sound like a broken record, but this is something that we were already going through. Betterment, for example, is a great example. Betterment is a robo-advisor that launched many years ago First, they launched only online. And they had success, they were good, and they were resisting the human support. Their industry has always relied on financial advisors. And they had to evolve and incorporate the human person that will talk to you on the phone about your money. Not because they're going to sell a different product be, be, uh, because of that, just because they identified that only digital was not enough in their product offering to make the sale and to keep clients. They needed the human interaction. So the same way we showed you that loop of, you know, customer acquisition and customer servicing, the idea is that you have to redesign and reassess your customer journey to see where the human interaction will be needed. Because I'm sure they will be. If you know most of your service providers, for sure, 
uh, if it's a product sometimes, but the digital and human integration is where we were moving forward. And now more than ever, and anybody I'm sure are going to, you know, agree with me that right now, all you want to do is get out and hug somebody, right? <laughs> you don't want to continue buying things online. <laughs> so that hugging, um, that human connection is going to be needed throughout your product or service. And um, no matter, it doesn't matter if you convert it to completely digital, it's still going to need that. And what's going to happen here is, is the, um, you're going to have to, that famous digital transformation that everybody was talking about uh, for the past two or three years, um, it, it, it's, it's going live. It, it's going at a much faster pace. We're seeing experiences uh, being introduced, being uh, modified, being enhanced, being optimized, being ultimately growing with this uh, digital, but the personal and the human aspect is also there. So the idea is, yes, look for uh, in your, in the whole customer journey, see where it's broken and see what you can do. Uh, and the idea, and in terms of the selling process, why, why is it important? Because in your selling process also, there are a lot of uh, pain points. There are a lot of uh, broken pieces. You need to reassess and figure out what you can do to uh, optimize it. Right. And we want to finish with some, you know, very practical um, do's and don'ts that I think will. will yeah. Help. Like we said, uh, show empathy. Like it's hard for everybody. You know, you know, it's it's never assume, never assume just because it's you're in such a latitude and versus others in other places it's show empathy understand you might touch the wrong chords you might touch uh, i mean yes you're doing fine but no i'm doing not fine in some other place so try to figure out how to uh, connect offer just plain help just be there offer your product in a new context and figure out what it is for instance we started off um, companies to scale. I mean, who's thinking about scaling in this day and age at this point? They, you know, let me break the news. People are thinking about how to prepare to scale despite the circumstances. So offer your product, whatever you do, have a clear message. And in your, uh, and if you're building a brand, pushing your product, it's okay. Do not be ashamed. Present your product with or your service. There's, there's pride to it. If you're producing electricity, if you're producing I don't know, different services, it, there's pride out, proud out, pride out there and, and go forward. And be clear on uh, either you're building revenue or building goodwill, trying to not mix and match those two. Um, about the no, don't. Okay. I think I mentioned this before. Just don't communicate without a need. Don't, you know, don't reach out if you don't have anything to say. Um, don't assume anything, you know, Gary touched on that. Don't assume anything about your client. Don't go to the first, you know, to the first option of dropping your, your prices. Don't cheapen your offering. Uh, see, you know, evaluate a way to actually offer something different um, that is cheaper if your client cannot acquire, you know, what you offer right now. But don't just drop it. Uh, because that is really hard to go back to later on. Don't uh, think about your product and how to sell it at the same time. I get this a lot. Like, okay, but if I, you know, let me, you know, put this product and then put it on Instagram, put it on Facebook, blah, 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 blah. No. First, think about your product or your service. Really, you know, take a good look at it and decide if it's good enough for now and then reassess how you sell it. Separate them both. And also just don't use anybody's recipes. Um, you know, the, I, I love it when I see like, this is everybody's first pandemic. Um, this is everybody's first shift, uh, major shift in that sense. Um, follow your gut, 
work on what you believe your client, you know your client best. So work on what you believe they will need. Um, and this, re this reminds me of, of Brene Brown's uh, podcast. I don't, I don't know if you guys have listened to her. She's amazing, but Unlocking Us. And she has a term like FFTs, which stands for the acronym of effing first time for everybody. So it's uh, effing first time for everybody in terms of pandemic. And uh, the idea is, first of all, acknowledge it, 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 it have, put it in a name, it's pandemic, it's issues, it's, it's something that's happening. And the second is put it in perspective. This shall also pass, and we're going forward and moving forward. And the next, next phase, she's, she refers to reassess the expectations you have. And um, somebody asked in terms of, and we're going forward, segue to the questions. Uh, somebody asked five minutes exercises in terms of, of doing, uh, uh, if you're stuck, just name it. Why are you stuck? What's going on? And then what do I do when I get stuck? Many people know me. Um, but if you don't, I, I, I kind of push forward and analyze what's going on. I try to meditate somebody some of us are trying to learn how to meditate i i recommend to for those of you who do it but if not i mean don't go at it and in, in terms of trying to solve a problem for 24 hours sitting at your desk behind zooming calls it's not going to happen there's no creative uh juice is coming kind of come out of out of that one and the the muse is not coming so everybody asks me is like oh the creative muses are coming no 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 you need to uh help them flow flourish so the idea behind the uh, this why do we go for the question uh, q a's that we might have I also i just wanted to add that also take this as a pendulum um i see this um for example with events when first when webinars first came out they were all the rich and everybody was saying, well, we're not gonna do in-person events anymore. Let's try to do, you know, all these webinars and let's save on, you know, on travel, etc." What happened was that people were not able to connect digitally the way that they did in person. And, you know, the pendulum sort of came back to, okay, no, I do need to meet people in person. I do, I do want to. Um, now we were forced, the pendulum forced up again, directly into all digital. And what you should consider is, okay, what is going to be the middle point? How are we going to come back to the middle again? It's not going to be exactly the way it is right now. For example, I have a client there, an association, and of course, associations rely on, you know, events, revenue, we do events. But what we were really finding is, okay, we are launching a virtual event, great. And it's, you know, it's gonna be great. But what is it gonna look like if we start launching small events, small local events? How are we gonna really find that connection? So I think that there is a lot of thinking to do in that, in that sense. Um, okay, questions. Do you have more examples of adaptation to pandemia to share beyond Nike? Okay. Gabby, do you want to take a hit at that? You want to? Well, there, there's a, a whole bunch of, of success and who, who, the winners of the pandemic or the winners out there in communication, the pandemic. And uh, we've seen the typical Bill and Melinda Gates donating such and such or Google doing or um, um, the, that, those examples are clear. But I would like to point out is, is on a local level, the amazing, the, the human aspect of, of bringing the best out of people. You see connections, you see kids helping out, you see, um, uh, I don't know, it, it's, it's from Shake Shack giving back in a way, their PPTs, and, and from, from doing different options that you connect. Uh, what struck me the most interesting was, I don't know if you saw it, the live event of Lady Gaga did with uh, Coldplay and, and one, one Citizen. And it was amazing. It's, it's a way you connect. 
I have a senior just graduating from high school and she is um, currently going through no graduation, no prom, no everything. So we've seen commencement speeches from Oprah, from Obama happening. So there are so many, out, so many examples out there that we can really reach out, just connecting to what's happening, being honest, and um, other examples. I mean, we've seen masks, and I don't know if you have uh, others in banks. We've seen also yeah, yeah. Amaranth working yeah. toward reaching it. Amaranth, yeah. yeah, Amaranth reaching towards uh, reaching for uh, a client of ours, reaching for the community and seeing ways it can connect. Well, um, actually, I've seen amazing um, response from smaller companies too. And for example, I had this software company um, that works with law firms, and they decided to evaluate each of their clients and give them a couple of months free uh, to help them go through the transition. I thought it was great. Also, a friend of mine here um, uh, just reminded me of an example he gave me. He told me McDonald's is delivering food to unemployed people in the hardest hit areas. That's an amazing thing too. Um, I think that uh, it just showing your human side and really collaborating is, is the key. Uh, those are the ones that are gonna be remembered. So I any a question that's very interesting. Right. Um, I work with several brands in Latin America in countries where e-commerce is not yet developed and the lockdown is total. They cannot distribute the product that they sell. What is the first advice for these brands to sell again? So it's that's a hard one. Um, no, but we've seen we we've seen the Colombia example. It's going back to basics. Yes, you don't have e-commerce but you have local and you've seen Coca-Cola trucks going to different or polar uh, Pepsis in Minnesota going through um, different locality, different environments and communities and selling the products. You see conversions of distilleries going into hand sanitizers. You see, uh, I mean, the e-commerce side, yes, it's important. And in this day and age, Latin America is lagging, but it's definitely there, there are solutions out there that are gonna be real, super strong in terms of e-commerce and, and solving for the non-banking -bank, uh, environment. Yeah, and also having to account that e-commerce doesn't have to be the only channel. You know, text message uh, servicing to existing clients or past clients is some ideas that they should be using. And they, if they cannot uh, uh, distribute the product, the yeah, looking for partnerships of active distribution channels right now would be a great idea. Um, I think that's that's one thing that they should you know start doing. The other question that was is interesting in terms of the service and uh, terms of the industry um, companies. I've seen people here from the movie industry or the theater, movie theaters industry. I see people from the. Um, production lines and ceramics and, the, and the, the conversations that we have that people are joining us. Uh, what I see is trying to connect. We have like, for instance, this, um, this app working towards giving the employees, certainly giving the employees, not certain, give, don't give the employees information. It's important. Uh, make them feel they're, they're part of, we're part of this together. Never overpromise or promise something that you can't keep. So never tell them that you're not gonna um, you're, gonna, you're gonna do major restructuring because it's most likely not true. So the the idea is to have engagement um, and have them create, have them bottoms up, Microsoft style the the learning organization that they became. It was much more on the bottoms up that the, as a top down approach. So having have open spaces for them to define solutions in this environment that we have. So I see that, you know, another question is, you know, any suggestions for industry that are more physical, like manufacturing where physical process is unavoidable. Uh, well, in the, in, in the production side of things, of course, that's a huge other challenge uh, that it really depends on where you are. Uh, and, 
that's a harder question to answer, but definitely, you know, maybe consider if there is a way to distribute production. Um, I don't know what type of product you're talking about, but maybe distributed production is, is an option. Um, okay. Another question is how to understand the new needs in services and draw a realistic sales process to implement. Yeah, that, 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 that's a longer conversation in terms of um, how, how do you reach, but then it's assess where you are, what is your, the product that you're, or service that you're offering, have a clear statement, define your channels, and put a prototype out there and test and go forward. And for me, it's, it's important to have it clear. Maybe I'm oversimplifying it, uh, Ali, in, in a way. But the idea is to is to try out what works. Yeah, yeah. Also, other question would be um, COVID definitely is going to change the way we're doing marketing. We've experiencing companies doing asking us for for our service to be outsourcing CMO, so they they had to lay off all the marketing staff, and we they. They outsource it before it's like impossible. You can't do it. You don't outsource core competencies. Now that we're doing that, we're, we're establishing. So there's different solutions out there. Um, well, I, I've been doing that for many years, uh, mm -hmm. but with smaller companies and now the larger ones are actually, uh, you know, implementing these too. Uh, yeah. and, and faster pace. Yeah. And faster pace of, of, of prototyping and getting your product out there. And testing and see whether um, if, if the timing is right yeah yeah and also the I see the long marketing you know um, the transparent the mention to transparent marketplaces I completely agree I think that you know in line with the trends that we see about you know uh, purpose-driven companies and everything in between um, more transparent marketplaces is something that's going to be also pushed by um, customers that it's going to be a need by you know that they will need um, yeah one of I, I want to circle back to the to the question and like the physical presence is 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 not possible and or physical presence is unavoidable you need to start structuring um, I'm sure you have your uh, protocols of of approaching getting back if not look at what Elon Musk is doing and trying to do and getting back to work. But I'm sure there's a lot of different um, solutions out there that you can get the social distancing right and in terms of the law uh, that you have. But um, in, any, in any event, I think we've covered what we wanted to go for, uh, with it. We can, we're here to help. We have products and services that um, um, that we, we, we have services that we can offer to you and communicate now beyond digital and beyond tools. Uh, we can talk offline if you like to have any of us uh, work towards uh, solutions or custom-made solutions for you. You've been, since you're part of our mailing, you probably received this. And the idea is to go forward and, and, and I mean, engage in conversations with you. I don't know. Okay. Ali? Yeah, exactly. So we actually pivoted. We found in each other a great partner and uh, we launched this offering that is basically helping, you know, a small, medium sized companies pivot and adapt to this change. So uh, next. that was the idea of these. And actually, I hope we do more of these. They're fun. Mm -hmm. And um, we hope to see you soon again. Thank yeah, you they, all so much for participating. Definitely. And uh, thank you so much. We're eager to help. It has been super exciting. Thank you. Thank you, Ale. And thank you all. Um, if you need any more action points or anything that we can address. And if you have any insights or, or suggestions, they're more than welcome. So thank you so very much. And um, I think we're, we're set. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Ciao, gracias. Mil gracias, Gaby. Ciao. Ciao, gracias, gracias Alejandra. Ciao. Bien, muy bueno.